Just like the ones I used to. No. No. What the poop is a drive through Christmas? What's up, everybody? Welcome to life. I'm Nick. Uh, and take a seat because I've got a story for you. If you live outside of the region of the world known as the United States of America, uh, then there's a chance that you don't know what a drive through is. You might be sitting there thinking that the drive through doesn't exist. Like it's like it's some, some sort of mystical creature. Who knows? Maybe outside of the USA, little boys and girls dressed up as drive throughs for Halloween. Oh yes, drive throughs are real. But what are they? The drive through is, it's really the American dream. <laughs> no need to wait for a table. No need to hold a greasy menu. No need to wait for your meal. You don't even, you don't even have to get out of your car. Just ride and wait. Knowing the next time you exit your vehicle, you will have a burger in your belly. <laughs> but anyways, back, back to my story. A few years ago, uh, I was in the holiday business. Yeah, I mean, I was just a, just a regular old St. Nick here. It was a short career. Uh, but one holiday season, I helped my church sell Christmas trees. Uh, these, were, these were great trees. I mean, we had connections. We knew people up in Washington that actually had a, a tree business. And they donated several dozen fresh cut trees to our church after school um and during the weeks during the weeks leading up to christmas i would drive to the church after school and i would run the i would run the tree lot into the evening and you know the typical procedure for um a customer in the fresh cut christmas tree market would be they pull into the lot. Maybe you got the kids along. You get out of the car and you, and you walk around. You look over the trees. We had different varieties of trees. Maybe feel the tree a little bit, you know, touch it, see how it feels. Maybe lean in for a little sniff. Just take a good old fashioned whiff. I did have, I actually remember, I had a gentleman do that. It was one of those situations where I was like facing this way and he was over yonder, uh, but my peripherals. I saw him, I saw him lean in and he just took a big inhale and he thought I, he thought I didn't see it, but my peripherals, he thought he could just walk away from that. Uh, sir, no, sir, you're going to, uh, you're going to, that sniff is going to cost you. Yeah. Nope. No free sniffs on my lot. And then after the customer picks their tree, I would prepare it for them just drill a hole on the bottom so that they could put the tree stand on there and all that stuff. And then, you know, they paid for it and then I'd help them load it onto their vehicle and they would be on their way. That was typical procedure. But I recall this one customer. She drove through the parking lot in her Lincoln Navigator. She, she passed all the other cars and rolled her dirty tires straight up onto my tree lot. Maybe she plans on buying a big tree, like a really big tree, because we had huge trees. I mean, we had trees that were like over 10 feet tall, and I figured she just, she didn't want to carry the tree very far, and that's understandable. No. This woman, I feel like her name was Phyllis. She looked like a Phyllis. Well, she acted like Phyllis too. Phyllis Rolls down her tinted window, then begins ordering a Christmas tree. Like she was at Mickey D's. What does this look like, Phyllis? What does this look, what does this look like a drive through What am I taking your order right now, Phyllis? She points at a group of about, I don't know, 30 trees. And she says, I want that one. Well, Phyllis, I can't really 
tell which tree you're pointing at exactly. Because you're over there in your car. After a few minutes of her pointing, I eventually found the tree she was talking about. Of course. She wanted the biggest tree. Like, yeah, this tree was... <laughs> This tree was like 12 feet tall. I'm not even joking. It was a huge tree. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, okay. She found her tree. Now she's going to turn her car off. She's going to help me load it into her vehicle. No. Once again, no. As I'm preparing the tree, drilling a hole, I look in the distance across the haze at Phyllis, still perched in the driver's seat of her Lincoln Navigator. She reaches for another button. And I see the window on her trunk pop open. Like not even, not even the actual trunk door. She just gave me the window. Okay, Phyllis. Okay. I needed help getting this tree to her car. Could not possibly do it on my own. It was so heavy. And you know, I don't, I don't know Phyllis. She may not even be able to walk. I don't know her story. The only other person present to help me move this tree was my grandfather. Well, my, my grandpa isn't a huge guy. Well, he's not physically intimidating, you know, like I am, but um, I felt so terrible, but I, I needed his help. So grandpa comes over. We both struggle to even move this beast of a tree. Finally, we get to Phyllis's trunk window and she yells out, just slide it in. <laughs> really, Phyllis? Just just slide it in. Yeah, just slide it in. Her Lincoln Navigator. That's a nice car. She had leather seats, which I'm sure got all kinds of cut up. So I lift, I lift the trunk window and proceed to sliding this huge tree into her car. But as we're pushing this tree, I look, I look beyond. And I see two little bald heads in front of the back seat. Two little boys, about 10 years old, were just sitting there the entire time. <laughs> These little boys were sitting there watching me struggle. They sat there and watched my grandfather <laughs> struggle <laughs> to drag that tree across the lot. <laughs> I was... Blown away, lo and behold, a branch gets caught on the back seat. I decide I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the back seat and try to pull it out. And as I open one of the back doors, a flood of trash just flows. I mean, like a river just flows out right in front of me onto the ground. McDonald's trash. And I had, it was one of those moments. It was an epiphany. I realized it all made sense. The reason Phyllis drove up and acted like this was a drive through is because that's what she does. That's what she does. Yes, she, she just, she made it a life. She took it to the next level. She made it a lifestyle. She, everything she does is a drive through Anyways, I climb up, pull that tree up. We finally got it in there. I mean, I was done. I was done. She, she left. She paid for it. You better believe I put a labor tax on that price, Phyllis. Yeah, I did. Uh -huh.